Hey everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the seven biggest mistakes that new people make when they're learning to code. So learning to code is actually something that can be very tedious. It can be very complicated if you're not coming from a technical background or if you've never coded in your life, you're not really sure what coding even is. Here's kind of the seven mistakes that I feel like a lot of new people make when they're getting into it, as well as some mistakes that some more intermediate and advanced people may make as well. So the first one is doing too many courses. So this is a big mistake because a lot of people, what they're doing is they're just doing the same courses over and over. Not necessarily the same exact course from the same person, but they're doing a course that's an intro to Python, for example, and then they're going and just finding another course that's an intro to Python. And it's really just really repetitive, a lot of the same stuff just over and over. And what this is doing is it's actually making it so you're not progressing with any sort of skill or ability. You're just practicing the same thing over and over where the beginning courses usually only teach you the basics. So what I recommend is that if you're going to start a new course or do any sort of new course, that this course is actually something that you're going to be learning. For example, if you know Python already, if you've taken an intro to Python course and you want to learn machine learning, don't know anything about it, then you can do a machine learning course just to get down the basics and everything and go from there. But don't go do a machine learning course and then start another machine learning course. These are things that really prohibit your ability to grow and gain more skills as a developer, engineer, your analyst, whatever you're using your coding skills for. So on to mistake number two, the next biggest mistake that I see people make is they're trying to learn too many things at once. And what I mean by this is, so there's so many different coding languages in the technical atmosphere of coding abilities. There's so many different things that are going on with coding and so many old languages, new languages, that it can be tough to choose which one you're actually going to learn. But what I see a lot of people do is they'll start learning one and then they'll get a little bit of it down and then they'll jump to another and then they'll jump to a different one, a different one, a different one. And while it can be good to know a lot of different languages, a lot of different coding skills and abilities, if you're the basically the jack of all, the master of none, then I mean, it doesn't really do you any good if you're just base level at all languages, but you're not anything past that in a certain language. So what I recommend here is that instead of going and learning a bunch of different languages, you pick a language. I personally recommend learning Python, Java, or JavaScript if those are kind of some base languages that are easier for beginners and as well, they're easier to pick up on. You learn the syntax of those, and then once you feel comfortable in those, and you're able to produce some pretty good software, analysis, programs, whatever, then you jump to another one. And really, this is one thing that I struggled with at first. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to do kind of data analytics, or if I wanted to go into software development, iOS development, so I kind of did a bunch of different languages at once. When I, If I would have just picked one at the beginning, and kind of learn that language. It would have been even easier to learn other languages further down the road and where I'm at right now. So we just pick one, start with one, and then go from there. So number three is actually the biggest mistake I see people make. Number three involves people that don't do projects. Not doing projects, really doing a project around something you like or around just something interesting, whether it be schoolwork or a sport you like, or if you like finance, then doing a project is going to help you astronomically improve your skills. This is how you're gonna go from an absolute noob, an absolute beginner to Elon Musk status. I actually don't know about that, but it'll help you improve your skills and it'll help you kind of learn how to implement different aspects of coding. And so what I recommend to a lot of people is that they do a project or anything that around something that they're actually interested in. So for example, if you're interested in sports, you can do kind of a sports analysis type thing. If you're interested in finance, you can possibly create like some sort of budgeting app or a way to predict stocks. Or if you're interested in web design, just create websites and create different things around websites and always be trying to improve your skills with these projects. And really these projects are gonna be so much more beneficial for you than doing schoolwork 
or even just watching a bunch of courses. These projects are really gonna test your skill and they're gonna make it so you're gonna have to learn how to Google and use Stack Overflow, which are really two important skills. So number four is something that a lot of people do as well, even myself included. This is something that a lot of beginners do when they're first starting out if they don't really know what they're wanting to do with coding, but this is just inconsistency with their coding, with their practice, with their skills. So this is really important because if you're inconsistent, it's like anything else in life. If you're inconsistent, it's gonna be harder for you to build up the skill that you're wanting to build up. I don't know why that took me so long to say, but it's like lifting weights, for example. If you lift weights every single day, you're gonna get stronger, it's just a fact. If you go and you're doing dumbbell curls and you're getting huge biceps, then that's gonna be, the huge biceps is gonna be the result of the effort that you put in. And it's the same thing with coding. If you code every day, then the things that you're able to do further down the road are just going to be the result of your consistency now and at the beginning, which is gonna turn into a habit of coding every day. I recommend to everybody that they set apart a little bit of each day, whether that be 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, doesn't really matter, but just something that you're doing so that you're being able to grow your skills and kind of turn coding into a habit because that's what it needs to be. So number five, this is one that I think is really underrated actually, and it's sharing your work. So a lot of people, even advanced people don't do this. I think it could be because one company, the company they signed for doesn't want them to share any of their work or anything they're doing. I mean, there's a lot of people who have a lot of great skills. With your host, the ex-Google, ex-Facebook, multi-million. That don't share their work, either whether that be in a blog, whether that be on Twitter, on YouTube, or in a podcast. I really think that these are ways that you can share your work and as well, you can get really good feedback from communities. That's really important. And then number two is you're gonna be able to grow your kind of portfolio. And if you're looking for jobs and you have this portfolio of work that you've put, that you've put online on the internet, then they're gonna be able to look at these and be like, oh, these are the skills he or she has. So this is really important, I think personally. It's really underrated, but I would definitely recommend to anybody getting out with code that it doesn't even matter if it's just you showing that you can do a for loop or something. This is really important for a lot of people and it's gonna help you get job offers and do different things down the line. So number six is actually one of the things that bugs me the most about coding when people start coding is a lot of my friends and people at school have told me this and they've wanted to get into coding but they're like, oh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do math. Like, I don't know math, I don't know Calc 3. I don't know Calc 3 either, but I code and I do programming. So this is kind of the biggest myth in coding is that you need to be good at math. You need to know how to do a bunch of different formulas, algorithms, equations, whatever, so that you can code. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to know quantum physics. You don't need to know all this advanced math. You can get started with coding with very basic math. Even if you just know like simple algebra, like high school algebra. So what I do recommend is just get down the basics if you don't have down the basics or anything of algebra. There's a lot of great YouTube tutorials out there on math and it gets you a nice little refresher as well. So definitely you're gonna have to start with a little bit of math, but you don't need to know a bunch of calculus and stuff to get started with programming. So number seven is actually the one that inhibits a lot of people from ever getting good at coding and it's the fact that they just don't start. So not starting is number seven and this is a really big one because a lot of people what happens is and I get messages all the time about hey how do I start coding? How do I start learning this? How do I start learning that? And this is from like friends and people on Twitter and stuff and I tell them you know you just gotta start. You gotta start doing things, you gotta start learning. You gotta just start and put in your reps. Like I said before, you just gotta be consistent. And people who don't start, they look back usually. I've had a lot of people that look back and I'll ask them, I'll be like, hey, did you ever start? Did you ever do this thing? You ever do that thing? And they're just like, oh no, I never started. I, it was a good idea, but you know, I just I just never did it. I, I watched Netflix instead. I mean, watching Netflix, nothing wrong with that, but I mean, if you're watching six hours of Netflix a day, you have 
30 minutes to code each day if you get my drift. That's definitely something that prohibits a lot of people from ever getting those really good jobs. I mean, tech and programming and all these different engineering jobs that are requiring coding, these jobs are really good paying jobs. And if you have the ability to code, then you're gonna be in a lot better position than most people are in their lives. You're gonna have access to technologies and platforms and people who can help you advance your career and just really put your life in a better place. Coding can really seem like a daunting task to start, but it's really just the basics. I'll link in the description two of my favorite books to get started with coding and with data visualization as well, um, if you're more interested in that kind of stuff. But really just getting started, being consistent, and doing the small things each day, those are the things that are gonna help you get even better at coding and as well as along with the other tips that I mentioned in this video as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button as if you're interested in anything to do with coding, tech, data science, machine learning. Those are the kind of videos I come out with. Hit the subscribe button as well and I'll see you on the next video.